Hello again, and thank you for tuning in. I am Arshia Lokanwala, curator and art historian and founder of Lakire Gallery. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to yet another episode of Behind the Scene with the artists in conjunction with my online exhibition, Living the New Normal in These Extraordinary Times, curated for MASH India. I am joined by Shalini Pasi, the founder and patron of Shalini Pasi Art Foundation and, and MASH India, a digital platform that explores the intersection of architecture, art, craft, and design. So a little bit about Prajakta. So Prajakta was born in 1980. She attended JD School of Arts in Mumbai in the painting department. But now her oeuvre includes photography, sculpture, and installation. She is widely known in India and internationally having several museum shows, including Imagine Documents at the Serendipity Art Foundation facing India, India from a female point of view at the Kunstmuseum Wolfsburg, Germany, a Tripoli agreement at the Sharjah Art Foundation. And she also participated in the 11th Wanju and 4th Kochi Biennale, as well as After Midnight, Indian Modernism to Contemporary India. In 2016 and 17, she was awarded the Umrao Jan Singh Shergill Grant for photography. So Prajakta and Shalini, welcome. Thank you, Ashia. Thank you, Prajakta. Thanks. So if I may begin the question, um, uh, Prajakta, as early as in 2013, you participated in an exhibition that I curated, Uncomfortably Numb, investigating the uncanny in contemporary times that reflected the disorientation and anxiety, almost in a sense anticipated, uh, you know, in this particular moment that we are in. In Living the New Normal, the photographs take on an even terrifying proportion with a punctum that Ronald Barth de defines as a piercing that shoots out as an arrow. So could you perhaps walk us through how these mundane, homely objects enter your oeuvre? Do, uh, do you plan for this to happen? Sure. Uh, thanks, Shalini, Mash, and uh, Arshia. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here and to be talking to everyone. I mean, these uh, these virtual windows have just become our, uh, you know, only windows to the outside in a way. Um, so it's lovely to be here and to discuss work. Um, so, uh, yeah, what happened uh, was uh, the, the show that you curated, uh, I think, in 2000. Nine that was no 2012. Um, uh, 13, yeah, 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 13. And what happened was, uh, there was a body of work that happened from 2008, uh, where I worked with everyday objects and uh, kind of uh, used plastic beads and mustard seeds to kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, almost uh, adhere them with plastic seeds and, and uh, mustard seeds. Um, so what, what's, what happened, I think, around uh, 2009 was that there were these cultural objects, there were these everyday objects that I would find in the studio or in the house and kind of stick them with these beads. Um, and I think the initial idea of doing something like that was to also uh, address the issue of some kind of an uncontrollable growth. Um, it had very personal uh, initiations in the beginning. It started off from my, um, you know, a uh, few members in the family, my mother actually having a fibroid operation. And this, this thing of some kind of a, a uncontrollable growth um, within the body and, you know, not realizing it on the outside was led to those works. Um, after making those cultural objects, the first thing that uh, came to mind was, and I showed those works in 2008 in a show, uh, which was my solo exhibition at, Pro uh, at, at the Guild Art Gallery. Um, it was called The Porous Walls. And uh, I think what happened with those works was also that, you know, you, you start realizing that you know you have these really tiny small spaces uh, of work uh, your studio spaces are really um, you know as contained as the small one bhk how do you manage to kind of keep producing objects and make you know work larger than what you can manage uh, that 
in a way almost drove me to photography uh, in a way and so so those cultural objects in a way almost led themselves into the photographic works um it was also the time i think 2009 were these works that were made and to, uh, 2009 was also the time when we heard about you know a, a, a daily newspaper saying that these uh, you know the, the cauliflower the tomatoes and the brinjals were going to be genetically modified and it made me thinking of what it would be to consume these uh, vegetables in a way um so so there were a lot of ideas around that and and i started thinking of how to kind of represent this idea and place them um, so so the refrigerator almost became like a immediate choice of staging these everyday vegetables um uh, inside the refrigerators uh so so that's how uh, i think the refrigerator series almost uh, happened and i think i almost welled into this or discovered the site of the refrigerator is what i would imagine it to be so uh, prajakta since we are doing a behind the scene can we go behind the scene into your refrigerator <laughs> yes please for yes. sure thank you for sure for sure so this is actually the oops this is actually the site of uh, where the cauliflower shot and the brinjal oh, wow. the uh, also the uh, escalator works were kind of placed here um and it's i think the light of the refrigerator is so magical you know you hardly have to do anything i mean you can well it's not happening here but uh, mm -hmm. yeah so what happened uh, when one discovered this space was also that uh, you can't imagine these visuals you know it also is something that happens and as one discovers these visuals um so i clearly remember that moment when the were uh, when the cauliflower was staged and you know i had uh, sculpturally kind of installed few other things around it like cotton and also uh, suji uh, to kind of make it look like a larger cl uh, cloud uh but it wasn't a visual that i was imagining it was only when i kind of viewed this image uh from the viewfinder of a camera i think it transformed into a cinematic image um mm. it became a explosive uh you know visual almost um and the mushroom cloud it it, it wasn't something that uh, i think i imagined uh it was something that i knew that okay you know i i do i was obviously working towards it and moving in that direction but i think that moment of looking at it through the viewfinder almost changed it so the camera and the lens of the camera also i think becomes the eye of uh, and the dictator of making the image as well wonderful yeah. thank you so much uh, shalini you had a question yeah so uh... there is a doubling in your intent to freeze in your work exploring ideas around memory making uh, freeze frames and the literal act of freezing uh, would you like to elaborate on these multiple uh, meanings sure um so uh, yeah i think that's the the zone uh, image i think uh, which looks at it more strongly um but i think i think spaces these domestic spaces and and uh, especially the space of the fridge almost became a site where uh, you know one could stage so many conversations and dialogues from say non spaces like the one in the escalator works i think it's almost like it could be anywhere it could be a site of a, you know of a mall or a um, or an airport Uh, where the sense of time is almost kind of dissolved um so but but so so that's how i think i mean i think the thing with the freezer work is almost where what happened was i was projecting these uh, found uh, uh, slides which i found in a local market in berlin and these were old film slides which i project onto the walls of the freezer so there are there is a double layering that happens there is the layering of the uh, of of a landscape uh, which is shot by somebody else yeah we can pause on this one actually or the next one okay uh, there is uh, yeah so there is the projection here of a slide mm -hmm. which is projected onto one of the walls of the freezer and then there's this landscape which is created 
um, so it's also trying to connect on two times zones if one could say like these these photographs were almost shot by and a person that i don't know it's almost an anonymous uh, person who's photographed these slides and these have just somehow reached um, a market these were shot i think in the 1970s mm -hmm. and uh, and i am projecting them in 2000 onto a wall of uh, of a freezer so i think it's also trying to kind of connect to two different uh, time spaces in a way and create a narrative around it. Uh, yeah, so of course there is this sense of memory in it. And I think, uh, I mean, I also stumbled around the same time on this text by Boris Royce, which speaks mm -hmm. of uh, musification of objects and, and really mummy interesting objects. Yeah. You say something like, like these, like the freezer is almost a way of mummifying something. Um, and uh, it made me think of what it would be to kind of be also extending the life of something. I mean, you put a chicken piece in the fridge. Uh, you're, you're hoping that, uh, you know, the time of something gets extended. The time of decay gets extended. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a sense of time and memory that gets... Uh, kind of uh, layered into this image and in this body of work. Absolutely, sure. You mentioned Andrei Tarkovsky's science fiction and a psychological film stalker as one of your inspirations for your work, in which the stalker, a professional guide, walks his client to the zone, a dangerous and forbidden place in which the normal laws of reality do not apply. Yeah. One can't help but see the parallels in your work. So yeah. just wondering if you'd want to comment on that. Yeah, I mean, of course, one has been, you know, you've, you've watched so many films of uh, so many times. You've seen Stalker so many times that it, it has to somehow come into, um, into your uh, kind of almost uh, enter your uh, consciousness. Um, so the title of zone or, or this body of work zone came in uh, directly from the stalker for sure. Um, but I think I was interested in the kind of uh, landscapes that he manages to create, uh, Tarkovsky. You look at the walls and uh, you look at this, the, the whole uh, imagination of the space, the zone, how, how he creates that. Uh, it was something that definitely interested me and so one is trying to connect that through not just uh, cinema and through uh, visual, but through also a psychological landscape. Uh, is it possible to create these kind of spaces of uh, you know, consciousness in a way? Is it possible to do that? Uh, when you were taking these photographs, were you aware of the kind of tension, uh, you know, the suspension, uh, you know, or one felt kind of suspended so were you aware of this particular moment or it was accidental, incidental, or did you know that, you know, this in, was in this particular, particular moment? Work you want to say? Sorry? In any particular work you want to refer to? Well, uh, it could even uh, refer to the first escalator work, the blue one, the larger piece, yeah. for example, you know, yeah. so just, uh, yeah. it's just, there's a punctuation, there's, there's just something, it's like a, yeah. It feels uh, a little bit like a thriller that, you know, something yeah. in anticipation, yeah. which is yeah. why I'm drawing on this particular movie. So just wondering if you actually had that sense uh, or it came about much later when you developed it or looked I at or revisited. the cavities of these everyday appliances, home appliances, you know, if you yeah. really look closer into these appliances, the cavities of, say, a washing machine or, a, a, you know, uh, a microwave or even a refrigerator, they have this absolutely surreal, uh, futuristic uh, kind of uh, uh, visual to them. And if you look, them, look at them really close, you feel like you're in a surreal space. Um, and that was a discovery of the refrigerator in a way. I mean, I almost thought that it was um, a space, a non-space. It could almost be, uh, you know, anything. It could be uh, an inside of a mall or it could be an inside of a, a airport. 
yeah. uh, and it could still have that uh, absolutely surreal sense. Uh, I think the sense of uh, um, alienness is something that uh, kind of comes within the visual, and I think that alienness is to do with these uh, these everyday domestic appliances, which are also strangely, I mean, some of their uh, you know, scientific discoveries have also come through the war uh, in a way. So like for, for instance, the microwave, you, with the kind of radiation that probably, uh, you know, uh, was discovered then is somehow used within the domesticity. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think, I think that there's a sense of alienness is probably what you're trying to refer to. Possibly, yeah. And it, it, it's something that one, uh, you can't plan it, but you, you're kind of, uh, you're drawn to it in a way and you're drawn because of a certain kind of mystic that these uh, things have. Uh, yeah, but the discovery of these everyday domestic uh, cavities was almost on a particular level also very practical. Um, you know, you also want to work within uh, really uh, kind of manageable spaces and then work on scale. Certainly. Shalini, did you have a yeah. question? So, uh, there is an interesting role that time plays in your work. The multiple timelines of the work traverses from film slides of the tourist to the ice in your freezer crystallizing around the projected image. Uh, how does this interplay of time reflect in relation to your artwork and practice besides the physical and the material changes? Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting that you bring up time and I think I'll move from that particular series, The Zone, to also the other body of work. I think time plays a major role also because uh, of the way I look at painting in a way. Uh, I think, the, I mean, I'm, I also uh, paint quite uh, 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 regularly and, and see the same way. It's also part of my practice. So I think what happens when one is painting is that there's the multiple layers that almost get... Uh, kind of, you know, squeezed onto one surface. Uh, so the layer of memory or the layer of uh, uh, you know, uh, time in a way which gets squeezed onto this one dimensional surface. But there have been a lot of movies that have also kind of, uh, you know, made me think about uh, the element of time. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of this particular film called uh, John the Elman. And mm -hmm. I think it is by this feminist uh, director called Shantal Akarman. And of in course, that, yeah. uh, basically, uh, you know, it's about a woman who goes through her everyday uh, rituals of, say, you know, cleaning potatoes and cutting vegetables. And, and um, it's, it's absolutely like these mundane domestic uh, chores of washing dishes and things like that. But what the director does is that he makes you go through the whole process of this uh, protagonist uh, doing those things. Mm -hmm. and the element of time that one kind of uh, goes through in a visual like that, that you, you almost, you know, you're almost made to feel like a warrior looking at this um, this, this woman going through her everyday activities. Um, I think, I mean, I kind of, uh, I think I, I do feel that the sense of time and slowing down time and the expansion of time yeah. uh, is something that I am interested in. And I'm hope, I hope that the visual manages to do that, either through painting or through photographic work. With painting, I think it becomes easier in a way because uh, I think the moment you sit in front of a visual and you start pouring yourself within the making of something starts, uh, I think, uh, defining with it, or, or, or at least starts uh, tracing on to the image. Uh, so that moment of working, uh, making and, and pouring yourself in, in doing something also gets uh, added on to the making of the, uh, onto the visual. Yeah, like this particular work that we're seeing now, it's like, it seems that uh, there could be a drop of water, but it seems completely frozen. So yeah. this, this um, it's, yeah. 
it's suspended in time so hence yeah yeah, yeah. these are moments um, of discovery as well you know intuitive yeah. discoveries that also one kind of uh, stumbles upon and i think you have to also be open to these intuitive discoveries and that also happens because you're uh, aware and sometimes waiting for these moments of uh, discovery and uh, intuitiveness and visual wonder to happen because visual wonder is something that you can't really plan uh, absolutely so um, you know you've mentioned the dryer the blender the refrigerator and the freezer uh which have become uh, negotiation sites for the political and ecological issues outdated ideologies social criticism and questions of identity where the personal becomes political so could you perhaps elaborate a little bit more on this sure yeah i think uh, i think domestic city was something that i have always been interested in and i think around the 90s and the 2000s when um i was passing out of college and the kind of visuals that were around uh, in in and around college felt like i didn't want to look at uh, media representations so much i wanted to uh, speak from an individual's perspective i wanted to have the, uh, the the i wanted the individual to have a voice in a way um so i think i started speaking from the domestic and thought it was easier to kind of then connect it to larger uh, contexts from the uh, after you know initiating from the uh, immediate surrounding um but i think the kitchen for me is definitely a site of uh, where you know you speak of politics and food and uh, caste and and religion so easily i mean it is a site completely uh, Well, you know, uh, absolutely full of that. You know, mm-hmm. you cannot avoid speaking of caste, and you cannot avoid speaking of uh, of gender when when you speak from the kitchen. So, a lot of work, say the sculptural works that I did from two thousand eight to the uh, paintings of uh, kitchen uh, platforms, I think refer to also labor in a way, labor within the site of the kitchen. um and i think it, they all are initial uh, personal initiations in a way you know you've seen your mothers spend time in the kitchen and and this whole uh, un um, you know almost unacknowledged labor within the site of the kitchen is something that i think i i do reflect on and I always try to do that absolutely so uh, we are also going to be taking questions so if you have any questions please let, let us know so then we can include you in the conversation so we have a question from georgina yeah uh, could you also tell us about situating these works in the current times in the covid times how the objects from uh, from a fridge take on a different significance in on text of everyday life this sure. is georgina maddox okay uh see i also look at these objects i forgot to mention in the earlier thing as i as hyper objects is something that i was thanks jupish um yeah is something that i was uh, always interested in um uh, you know after reading timothy Ma- uh, martin's um uh, you know it, this whole thing that the object starts looking like a hyper object almost um and uh, i think uh i think in today's time it gets even more uh, differently layered i mean we have everything that's coming from the outside where everything gets washed and cleaned and then maybe refrigerated again and the constant anxiety of uh, you know you don't know if you've sanitized it enough or not uh, is another strange anxiety that one is living with uh, in the current time um but i think these objects definitely and i think the paintings also in a way uh, or or the photographic works totally take a different turn especially about the inside and the out i mean if you're looking at the inside and the outside um the, the zone series where i have tried to kind of project these um slides onto uh, one of the walls of the freezer is almost a way of opening up a space you know i mean we living in our enclosed spaces uh with you know connection to the outside is only through television screens um 
I think it's almost like looking at the inside and, and carving another space within the inside. So for me, the inside becomes interesting now. It's also a time when we have to think about what really home means and uh, what it means to people who are probably in toxic relationships and what it means for people who are really trying hard to reach to a safe place. Uh, yeah, so I think the inside becomes an interesting space and a space of inquiry for me, I think, at the moment. And uh, yeah, the spaces look even more different and surreal now. Also, they look like kind of sterilized, you know, and also the title capsule. Yeah. In a way, when you kind of rethink the moment that we are in. Yeah. And interestingly, there are no people over here. I mean, you know, which is also what we are finding right now. The absence and the loss. So it seems... Uh, and kind of revisiting these works, which is also the reason they are in the exhibition, is because they kind of, they, they are warning signs. And um, I do remember one of the other um, objects in the exhibition, uh, which was an alarm clock, which rang like every half an hour. Yeah. So the sense of paranoia, anxiety, being yeah. too close, the fact, the lack of everybody. So yeah. also kind of uh, speaks about and speaks to this particular moment. Yeah, I mean, I think this, this, point of like coming to a boiling point literally you know? I think I think the the, the work with the um, well, where the clock keeps ringing after um, a particular moment uh, almost triggers some kind of anxiety and I think I have that with alarm clocks you know you, you hear alarm clocks and there's just the sense of uh, answering to an alarm clock um, I mean, the, and this whole notion of sleep as well, when you're in your sleep and you don't hear the ring, alarm clock and then you wake up to this, uh, in an anxious state to imagine why it has not rung. Did you kind of uh, misplay, you know, you, you didn't put the time right or things like that. And I think that somehow trickles into the more recent work as well, where um, in the recent work at Project 88 in my solo, uh, there's this one... Um, uh, soap. Uh, it's a soap that has a drip falling on it every few seconds. Uh, so it's almost a way of kind of collecting time uh, and uh, and almost seeing this passage of time and see the object kind of dissolve over, over a period of time. So we have a, a question from Sri Goswami. It would be nice to, uh, to show the viewers some images from uh, Prajakta's latest solo show uh, to see the relationship with time and for Prajakta to talk about foreign objects uh, present in the human body. So, would you have those images with you handy? We'd, we'd I have them the on my screen and then I'll have to share my screen, which yeah. is absolutely possible. But it was also a question I think that Arshia was leading up to in a way. Okay. So, if you can uh, share those works uh, either which way, it will be great for the viewers to see. Thank you. Thank you, Shri. Arsha, you were asking something? Uh, do you want to take this and then maybe... Um, so actually, um, you know, like in a way, one of the things that I, that I was really interested in, of course, because you're using the, the fridge and, uh, you know, the kitchen objects. Um, so like in terms of feminist, uh, con you know, construction, is there a way that we can actually read these pieces and works in a very feminist way. I do know that you've spoken about your mom and, you know, this particular relationship that you've shared with her. But, you know, can these images have a strongly feminist implication? So, Well, the site of staging clearly is uh, domestic and yeah. made because of that. Um, but I think the, the vegetable series, the cauliflower, the, 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 you know, the, the vegetables and the tomatoes and the brinjal is something that I think directly connects to this uh, uh, issue. But yeah, otherwise I think there were other works which have happened, uh, not particularly. I mean, I don't imagine the photographic works directly in that space, but uh, so many other installation pieces from you know, the porous wall series where there were these uh, carved granite kitchen platforms where you know, objects were placed onto them. I think, mm -hmm. I think that particular body of work. Also the washing machine, the kitchen debate in a way. Uh, okay. Definitely the one that was shown um, 
during uh, the Queen's Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Had the sense of the everyday uh, objects, uh, kitchen objects, uh, kind of installed into these, uh, you know, bricks. Uh, there were impressions of these everyday objects that were kind of installed um, inside this one uh, space. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, though, obviously we are all, you know, connected with the issue and uh, it's difficult to kind of spin them to a particular body of work, especially the photographic works. Sure. But, yeah, I think the site of the kitchen is something that uh, directly refers to this issue of labor, of of unacknowledged mm -hmm. labor within the site of the kitchen. True. Thanks. Um, is there another question? So, uh, Anita sent a question. Can I see that? I can't see Anita's sure. question. Uh, uh, the freezer seems like a body. Uh, the freezer seems like a body explored through technolo technology, like an ultrasound. Everything looks strange, even diaspotic. Uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's a comment. Yeah, clearly, Anita. I think it. it uh, I think it's almost like looking within, uh, and I think that has been, uh, and looking within through these different technologies like the ultrasound or even now in the current body of work, the x-rays where I've placed everyday objects and um, passed them through an x-ray uh, machine. Uh, I think there's this uh, need or almost this need to see the inside um, and the strangeness that one sees within uh, these uh, really inverted spaces by you know, almost looking within. Um, so yeah, I think it was more of a, a comment than a question. There's one more uh, question if you want to take it uh, by an anonymous attendee. I don't know who this is, but can you tell, uh, tell us a little bit about the kind of artworks that you were making before you discovered your interest in the domestic landscapes? What, what was I making before? Uh, you discovered your interest in the domestic landscapes. Okay. I mean, I've always, uh, I think, looked at uh, the site of the domesticity in a way. I, I clearly remember even in college and post that it was necessary that I spoke from that individual perspective. So, uh, I don't know, strangely around that time, I just thought that I can't work with human figure. I mean, if you're thinking of painting and you, you, know, you think of what to paint, you know, as your initial, initial uh, questions when you start uh, your own journey as an artist, um, I always thought that I couldn't paint the human figure within my work because I just thought it made it so literal. Mm -hmm. uh, what the objects did was that they managed to speak about the human presence without really showing the human presence. Um, so I've always uh, been fascinated with say, even still life painting, uh, where you're staging these, uh, what interests me of uh, still life painting is the fact that you you know, that you have uh, this one apparatus, which is kind of almost staged in the mm -hmm. center of an art class. And there are artists who are like trying to represent it from all sides. What's interesting is that if you walk around uh, this class, you see, different representations of the same thing. And I think that speaks a lot about what painting is in a way of how you try to look at the same thing, but you know, everybody is painting it with their own spirits and own understanding. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, I mean, even before this, was, I was fascinated with everyday life and um, still life objects. That's what I would paint. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, any other questions that we have? So, Prajakta, what about your inspirations? I mean, artists that have inspired you, works that you've loved. Can we have a little bit more about what's in your head, uh, you know, in terms of uh, something that, uh, you know, you've drawn to or, um, you know, referred to, beside, of course, Tarkovsky that we've already discussed. But uh, so what's your inspiration? 
scale growing up. I mean, in college, uh, you know, we were we were lucky that we were in Bombay and we could see so many art exhibitions that were happening around then. Uh, I remember discovering uh, Mithu Sen's work, Anita's work in in the old Lucky Ray that uh, you had, and uh, also seeing some amazing exhibitions in Kemul. And so one grows up seeing a lot of artists you know you don't think like you can just uh, make the kind of work you make without the history that you kind of carry with you so i think each and every works each and every artist uh, kind of contributes to your uh, perception of making your own work in a way but i've been fascinated with anita's work i mean anita mithu were works were artists that you know one couldn't miss um, the whole idea of the body, the fact that you could use your own body instead of anything else to make work. Um, and I think that uh, frees you up as an artist, I think. The fact that you can make work, uh, you know, with with your own body, this is amazing. It's, it's, and I think that also, in a way, uh, helped me look at site-specific installations. I was fascinated with environmental art and uh, earthworks as you know, you know one was growing up looking at art history um, I think it, this sense of freedom that you get that you don't need say a, a white cube space or you don't need those kind of uh, you know things to make art you can make art anywhere and the first site specific work that I did was in my parents bedroom actually um, mm -hmm. where I stuck these bindis on their walls and so you're also in a in a you know moment and trying to kind of question the idea of um, how art can be more accessible and, and free yourself from that. Wonderful. Thank you. So do we have any questions from Jitesh, Mithu? Um, An observation from Jitesh. Yeah, we can read out and show me Jitesh. Yeah. Yeah, the kitchen, I mean, I'll go back to Jitish's. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to also, I'm just scrolling back myself. Okay, I haven't been able to see it. But... I think, uh, I think the kitchen debate was, um, was uh, a work that also uh, happened because of a particular moment. I was in Berlin at that time and, uh, you know, making works. Uh, on a residency there. Um, there's so much of the Cold War still present in Berlin that it's impossible to kind of not look at it. Um, I remember around that time researching a bit around uh, domestic appliances and the Cold War. And I came across this interesting debate that happened between Nixon and Khrushchev in front of a washing machine. Um, it's interesting in a way to look at uh, what uh, what happened in that moment where there's Nixon and Khrushchev trying to argue on capitalism and communism in front of a washing machine. Um, but it was all staged and it was all happening in this uh, exhibition, uh, which was actually an exhibition that America was trying to promote the modern kitchen, the modern comfortable life. Mm -hmm. um, through these modern uh, appliances. Uh, what fascinated me was how the domestic became political in a way. And I think that's yeah. what, um, uh, some, I mean, that was something that uh, was a discovery at that time. And, mm -hmm. uh, but then bringing it to Kochi was another thing that, you know, I mean, Jitish invited me for this uh, amazing, uh, uh, show that he curated the, the vinyl at Kochi and it was amazing to be part of it and he gave this amazing site uh, near Pepper House which was uh, you know almost felt like it was half sunk in there were these laterite bricks and we had such long conversations around that time of how to kind of use the site and, and make the work kind of speak to the site. Um, so speaking of that uh, this, keeping this conversation of the capitalist and the communist in a way, I think what I did was I tried to look at these objects, everyday objects within the kitchen, which were almost on the verge of uh, extinction in a way. You, know, you have these modern kitchen appliances coming in and all these traditional ones 
disappearing and so uh, what we did was i um, i kind of took impressions of these uh, kitchen uh, objects and i kind of almost uh, installed them inside the laterite bricks and then placed them on to the walls of the uh, site uh, so there's a so there, there are multiple conversations i think happening in that uh, site of uh, in in the work that i showed at the kochi ban of the everyday of the politics of the labor um, yeah i hope i've answered jitesh's question um any other questions that we have so uh, um why don't you uh, uh miraj i think i uh, was great to see the site of prajakta's work her refrigerator it is fascinating to reread uh, these works now when we are spending so much time in our kitchen within enclosed domestic spaces also the whole issue of household and health i think it's a comment from mira yeah Yeah. Well, absolutely. It is. Uh, it's also sad uh, to see whatever is happening. A lot of people yeah. who are not paying their help, and uh, the fact that uh, fact remains of what happens to that labor. Uh, you know, the, uh, where people are getting more and more worried of uh, what what happens in a Bombay life is that uh, you have one maid who is working in ten different households and trying to make her living. and suddenly with this crisis now it's quite possible that people might want them to only work in one household and it's a big question how how does that whole section of society manage to survive and sustain themselves so yeah such very difficult times that we are going through absolutely yeah um would you like to possibly conclude about and talk a little bit about your recent show and and um, sure. the unfortunate timing yeah. of it yeah or yeah. fortunate timing i don't oh fortunate yeah and if you have images it would be wonderful I, so well, i'll have to share my screen uh, yes. and uh, yeah. yeah so the the i'll just give a background of the recent show and which almost feels super weird because you know i was making these works almost a year before and uh, the trigger point for the show was actually uh, you know this close relative in the family who kind of uh, suffered from a lung infection um and uh, this uncle who's almost 70 75 had worked all his life in a detergent factory and managed to have chemicals in his lungs the first thing that the doctor asked was where was he working and uh, so so they almost had these chemicals in you know there these chemicals in his lungs and uh it made me think about the body of the worker it made me think about the body of the laborer in a way and uh, who controls this body and this uh, you know the capitalist state in a way and does the body have any voice um what i'm going to do is i'm just going to quickly run through uh, some of the images sure. there are two questions that have come in one yeah. is from krishnamachari bos he's asking you you've been using pastel tints to depict urban habitats especially mumbai yeah. could you expand on that and the other question that we have is how do you see time as in terms of the past present and future so maybe if you could include some of those thoughts in your yeah yeah sure uh i think the palette has uh, been uh, pastel or also gray in a way because um i thought color adding color uh, to a painting or to a work would almost take the attention of the viewer to the color um so to keep the attention focused to the content of the work i thought i would minimize the use of color uh, while working um i think uh, that was something uh, Uh, and i think the the color of these pastel shades also relates to the walls the middle class walls uh, uh, that have been fascinated with uh, you know the walls that surround these middle class homes who have pinks and greens and uh, there's a very particular shade of cream that most middle class homes have uh, and i think that kind of was i wanted my paintings to almost look like they were part of walls and not things that were kind of you know almost put onto the walls but almost something like 
where the, the walls, where the paintings almost emerge out of the wall. And I think that's why the palette. Um, and the, the question on time was what? So uh, how do you see time as in, in terms of the past, present and future? Like in terms well, of I think there's no particular linearity that way. No? Even in a way you were trying to kind of uh, go back and forth. And I think memory plays a lot of role in that in memory and imagination where you go back in time in your memory and then you're able to also imagine the future. So I think for me, time becomes a, a, a fluid a sort of thing to kind of go back to and not have like a, that's not how one imagines. Um, that's not how, how I imagine time. Um, but I'm just going to uh, look for sure, that. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation. Thank you. And uh, yeah, wonderful to have uh, so many of you with us today. So hello, Anita, Boz, uh, Akshay. Is it Akshay? Georgina, Jitish, Mark. Oh, hello. Meera, of course. Meer, uh, we haven't met yet. But welcome. Mitru Sen, Mohammed, always. Navjot, oh my God. Okay. Neha, Prachi, Pushpa, hello again. Ravi Kumar, Reena Kalat, Sanyog, Shaku. Um, it's great to have you in all, the, all our sessions. So, Shri, hello. Ulhas, Usha Gaude, and Vijay. So, it was wonderful. So, I'm just going to quickly uh, run through uh, this uh, Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So, uh, so the title of the show is Body, A Body Without Organs, and it clearly looks at the body of the laborer. And I think in today's context, it looks uh, even more uh, in a poignant way where you, know, you see the labor force of this country on the streets walking towards their homes. Uh, so, it, yeah. So as you walk into Project 88, you have a couple of, like you see this projection on the right hand side, it's actually a projection of uh, gas burners. It's a video projection, which is on a loop and keeps playing. On the left you see uh, uh, is actually a, an X-ray work. So it's actually like X-ray films, uh, which are placed uh, in light boxes. Um, and these are actually everyday uh, objects that kind of uh, were taken to a hospital and then put under an x-ray scanner and then printed. Um, so, uh, yeah. And there were paperwork. So, yeah, this is the close-up of the work. The title of the work is He Woke Up With Seeds In His Lungs. And uh, so it's actually steel, wool and rubber pipe, uh, which is placed together to kind of imagine the inside of a body. Um, the process of making these works was absolutely uh, exciting in a way because you're not sure what uh, the result was going to be like. Um, because it's not a digital film, it is, it, it is a proper X-ray film which gets developed through the course of, um, you know, various uh, you know, you put, you dip the film in different liquids and solutions uh, so that the image appears onto the film. These were uh, the paperworks and uh, this is the close-up of the paperwork. It's titled as 10.34 a.m. And uh, the paperworks were almost, uh, they, they happened also in a way because I was in conversation with this particular uncle who's, who went through this whole, uh, you know, lung infection and uh, thing. And uh, so I would speak to him and uh, imagine the kind of spaces of work that he was surrounded, he, he had surrounded himself, you know, or he was subjected to. So he would, he would describe how this would be a table and, you know, his working desk and things like that. Uh, this is again steel bowl and uh, glass beads. Uh, again, an X ray work. Uh, so this is actually a coconut bark uh, and steel bowl. Yeah. 
so the sense of the body in a way um, from these everyday objects the, these are actually uh, water balloons which were placed under the x-ray scan scanner I'm just going to run through it uh, because we can see these on project AD side and just trying to connect it to the moment yeah. of today uh, as well as I mean all the images are almost uh, images of these empty rooms and um, yeah, in this project they did. Yeah, it's amazing. We hope to see it soon. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, everything opens up and uh, I don't think life will be normal again, but uh, to whatever way that it can be. Yeah. yeah. So, so wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing these images from Project 88. They just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely visit the website and see them again. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you all. Uh, it was so wonderful to have you. Projecta, thank you for taking time to be with us and uh, look forward to seeing your show at Project 88. And thank you, viewers. And for next week, we have, uh, can you guess who? Maybe not, but Mitu Sen. So please do join us, same time, Sunday, 11.30, with Mitu Sen. And um, stay safe and have a good, is it good night? No, it's in San Francisco, it's good night, but have a wonderful day. Good morning to everybody over there. Thank Bye. you, Akshaya. Thank you, Prajakta. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.